Hey, this is, Hi. <laughs> this is Mark from Guillotine Chemistry back. We are in the middle of doing some orbital diagrams. So I've given each of these uh, young chemists an element to do an orbital diagram for us. So they're working through this now. Uh, we're going to answer questions about those and then try to do an electron configuration and a noble gas abbreviation all in the next 10 minutes. So wow, we'll see if we can do that. All right. So uh, the first thing you need to be able to do if you're going to do orbital diagrams is have a handy order filling chart. Uh, this shows the order in which subshells fill. Now, it does match the periodic table, uh, but some students find the transitions between the S's and the D's and the P's kind of confusing. Uh, but we'll do another video on how those two link up. I think the important thing to be able to do with orbital diagrams is link this to quantum numbers. Okay, so we just reviewed quantum numbers. Orbital diagrams are based off the rules of quantum numbers. The L's, the M sub L's, M sub S, all of those things are tied in orbital diagrams. In fact, what I'm going to ask these guys to do at the end of the video is pick an electron out of their orbital diagram and then tell me what the quantum numbers would be for that. It's not as hard as you think. Can I do it right now? Sounds okay. hard. I think I'm done. Okay, so Lucy had copper, all right? So <laughs> copper has how many electrons to find a home for? 29. So again, as we go through the hand order filling chart, right, we have to do, go ahead, you can say them. Just go through these subshells. We have 1s, 1S 2s, 2S, 2p, yep. 3s, 3p, 4s, 4d. Good. Now, wait, 4d? 3d. Oh, 3d. 3D. Close. Now, why did you go 3p to 4s instead of 3d, 3p to 3d? What? Right, boom. Oh. Yeah. So the, the, well, that is true. But remember, I'm done. Good. We'll get to probably in a second. The reason we did that was we remember that the 4s is actually lower energy than the 3d. So one of the class mistakes students make is they fill up the third energy level completely before they start the fourth energy level. But that's not the case. You need the handy order filling chart because 4s is actually lower energy than a 3d. All right. So again, she found a home for 29 electrons, right? Did I do it right though? No, but that's because I tricked Lucy. I gave Lucy an exception to the periodic oh. table filling. Oh, but we will come back. That was like the last two minutes of class I, yesterday. I know, but we will. Radical. But but we will. We will come back. The exception. Rude. We will talk about the exception of copper at the end. But but she, she didn't write without exceptions. She found oh. a for all of the, So we'll get back to what the exception was. <laughs> right here. So so now Fez. Now Fez had to find a home for how many electrons? I mean, I mean, thirty-five. 35, because again, bromine's atomic number is 35, right? And so again, what order did you fill in? Ready? Go through your subshells. 1s, yes. 2s, yes. 2p, yes. 3s, 3p, 4s, 3d, 4p. Okay, so is that the right order? Correct. Maybe. Okay, now remember the 4s Thank fills you. before the 3d, okay? And he had 35 electrons, All right? Now the way we can check this is we look at the last subshell filled, right? The last subshell you filled was the what? 4p. The 4p. And remember that you can use the periodic table to check this stuff, right? Bromine is there as a halogen, right? And remember that that block to the right is called the p subshell, okay? And so when you're moving across that, you're putting electrons in a p subshell. Bromine, where it is, should have five of the six spots filled. And do you? Do you have five of your six spots yes. filled? So that's a good sign that that is correct for bromine. He's one electron away from being isoelectronic with whom? Neon. No. I can't read that. Oh, yeah, it's faded. Oh, uh, don't tell me. I want to guess. Bismuth? <laughs> no, Krypton. Krypton. Krypton, yeah. Krypton. I can't read. Krypton. Okay, so that's correct, right? And then uh, Will did uh, rubidium. Now, rubidium is an alkali metal. And again, if we're going to use the periodic table to cheat, that means, Will, where should the last electron be and what kind of orbital? An S orbital. An S orbital. If, if, if you're using a periodic table to help, rubidium should be putting one electron in the outermost S. And is it? Yes. And which S is it? Look at your- Five. Five S, right? So gotcha. one, two, three, four, five. So I'm pretty confident that Will did it correctly. Me too. All right, so when you're doing orbital diagrams, here are the three mistakes students make. A, they bring out the orbitals, I mean, they bring out the subshells in the wrong order. Use your handy order filling chart. They'll bring out the 3D before the 4S. Mistake number one. Mistake number two is they bring out the wrong size bus, right? No. So they bring out four orbitals instead of five, or two orbitals instead of three. So remember, the pattern that we learned in the quantum numbers video, S has how many orbitals? 
One. One. P has how many orbitals? Three. Three. P has how many orbitals? Five. 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 Seven. And F has seven, right? And if you remember the number of orbitals, you'll get it right. <clears throat> the last mistake is to just mess up electrons somehow. The wrong number or to double up. Remember, electrons, just like kids on public transportation, get their own seat before they double up. All right, and that's called Hun's rule. Okay? So now, on to the exception with Lucy. I gave Lucy the I'm tough doing it. one. I'm doing it. I'm figuring it out, Mr. Anagol. I don't know. Oh, no, we actually, you didn't have to redraw the whole thing. Right? Remember that there, there are five exceptions we talked. <laughs> and she's mad now. The five exceptions all have to do with the transition metals. There are more exceptions okay, in the these. Way. But if you have a almost half-filled D subshell, or an almost filled D subshell, there are five elements that will steal an electron away. Okay, and it's the coinage metals, it's copper, silver, and gold, will steal one electron from their outermost S to get 10 in the D, and then chromium and molybdenum will steal one electron to get a half filled D. And so all she had to do- Which is add an electron to the 3D. And steal it from the, the outermost S, which is your, Outermost S. What? 4S. Your 4S. So you would steal an electron from your outermost S orbital, because that's the closest. So it would steal an electron from the S and fill up the D. Now, I'm not a huge fan of exceptions, um, but I, this is an exception to my dislike of exceptions. I think it's important that you know these, because I think you should understand that there are exceptions to the filling order, right? And that atoms do this all the time. And this is where we get multiple charge cations. So we're going to take a small break as they do their orbital diagram. I mean, their electron configuration. Sure, we have two minutes. That's enough time. Oh, wait, no, actually, we have more time. You have enough time. They're going, to, they're, going to do their, they're going to do their electron configuration and their noble gas abbreviation, and we'll come back when they're done. I know out. how to do this because I already wrote it down. So I'm really bad at these. Oh, no, this is easy now. Once you have your orbital diagram, right, all you have to do is just turn this into your number code, right? So 1s, how do, you, how do you just write this as a number? You say 1s. 1s. Two. two. That's it. Two S two two P two no. two P six. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So go ahead and do your do your codes. This is honestly, we'll just leave the camera running because this isn't going to take very long. I finished. Okay. We so get it, Lucy. I finished. <laughs> so so Lucy did her code for uh, copper, right? So again, if you look at the orbital diagram for copper, which I'll put up somewhere around here, um, all you do is you just represent it numerically. So what is it again? Just run through it. Your your uh, electron. One S two S two P three P no three S. What? Well, well, you give give me the uh, give me the superscripts too. One S two two S two two P six three S two three P six four S one. Four S one. Three D ten. Very good. Okay, and so her noble gas abbreviation will count back to the last noble gas she did. What noble gas is hidden in there? Argon. Argon, right? And so what she'll do is she'll take the first eighteen electrons and just say argon, and then go from there. So it's argon what? 4s1. 4s1. 3d10. 3d10, right? And so again, if you look at copper right there at 29, right? Argon is the last noble gas you pass. So you always go back to the last noble gas. Uh, Does that really make sense? What are the noble gases again? No, I just thought it was the. No, I never. What do you think it was? No, I thought it was like the one that, like, it didn't. Ugh, I didn't think. Ugh, I'm trying to work. The closest I one? I, yeah, I just thought it was a close one. I didn't yeah. realize it was and that's a, that's a very gas. common mistake. You always have to go back to the last noble gas. What are the noble gases? It's so, the last <laughs> column. So for rubidium, it would be uh, xenon? Okay. Right, so yours is super easy, right? Yeah. So his electron configuration, right? Go ahead, run through your electron configuration. 1s2, 2s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s1, 3p6. Well, uh, 3s1? How dare you. 3s2. Two. Two. Yeah, it can't be one. It's got to be filled. Yeah. Keep going. Uh, 3p6, 4s2, 3d10, 4p6, 5s2. 5s2? Oh, that's why. You, you, 5s1. 5s1. That's where that extra electron came from. So, yes, so yes. he already, he didn't know it was 5s1 before. Yeah. Right? And so his is really easy because what noble gas did you just pass? Xenon. Xenon. So it'd just be xenon and then 5s1. 5s1. Okay. Fez, finish this up. 1s2, 2s2. You got it. 2p6. Yeah. 3s2. Yes. 3p6. Yes. 4s2. Uh huh. 3d10. 4p5. Now he's super close to a noble gas, but that doesn't count. He has to go back. Yeah. So, so I did. I did argon. Good. 4s2. 3d10. 4p5. Good. And listen, it's my opinion that don't rearrange this stuff once you've done the noble gas abbreviation. A lot of people like to rearrange it based on the increasing energy level. 
I think that's a waste of your time. Plus, I think this tells you more about the energy levels. Like, this is the actual order they fell in. Okay? And that's it. That's how you do an orbital diagram and electron configuration and a Nova gas abbreviation. We gave Lucy an exception because I knew Lucy could handle it. Any questions? Just, I, I, okay. Can you give us questions? Um, <laughs> Wait, where's the this? Um, he said, any questions? Oh, I get So, um, for, like, say you have, like, oxygen. Yes. Would the closest one go the gas be helium? Yes, so oxygen would go back to helium. Ah. Right. And so what are the only two elements that don't have noble gas abbreviations? Helium and, helium and hydrogen. hydrogen. Helium and hydrogen. Now, oh. as a bonus activity, here's what they're going to do. I want you to each to pick out the last electron in your drawing. Can I do it for actual bonus points? <laughs> I wish. Well, this might be points for the test. What I want you to do then is for, for we're going to tie this into the last lesson. And what they're going to do is they're going to find the quantum numbers for their last electron. The N, well, you're going to find the N, L, M sub L, and M sub S. Oh. Right? So let's, let's, so let's, let's, right? Let's, let's choose Will. Will, what's your final electron? 5S1. Okay, so what, so let's all, let's all do Wills together, right? So what is, if, if the last electron is in a 5S1, okay, what is his N? His N. One. Well, what energy level are you on? Five. Five, right? His energy level is five, so his N is five. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah. And so if he's in an S, what's his L? His L is four. What no. is the numeric code for an S subshell? Isn't that zero? Zero, right? Oh. So his N is five, because he's on the fifth energy level. He's in an S orbital, and oh. S's are L equals zero. zero. Okay. Oh, we got no, it. No, we're gonna keep going. No, <laughs> we, no, we need to pass that. No, no. Yes. <laughs> if, what? It, now listen. And what is his M sub L? This is easy because there's only one M sub L for S. What's what? his? What's the M sub L for an S orbital? Always what? One. Well, no. What's M sub L can be anything from L to negative L. Negative one to one. Negative right. One, and so if one. L is zero, what's the only M sub L? Zero. Zero. So that orbital is zero, right? Yeah. His M sub L has to be zero. And if it's the, and if, I'll go through this more in the video. Um, and if you, and if, if the first electron goes spin up or spin down, up. Uh, so what's that? Upstate. So what? What is that for? Excited. Excited. No, it's not excited. It's just spin up. Water. What? No. What are the two designations for M sub S? Hep. No. What are the two designations for M sub S? Wait. Wait. What? We just did this like ten minutes. No, it is. Wait, what, what, what are the two? What are the only two numeric values for M sub S? Zero and one. Negative one. Plus one half and negative one half. So spin uh, up would be. What, what, what is your one half? Half. Plus one half. If you found this useful, give um, it a like and a subscribe and follow like It's Fez with two Z's on Instagram I'm and stream my song because the link is in my bio. Okay. Goodbye. Thanks for watching and have a great day. You have a great day too.